Hello everyone, Alex here. I thought I'd do a slightly different video this time. I wanted to make a video about my picture Coral Connections, which has just been announced as a winner in this year's Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition. But rather than talk only about my picture, I sort of thought I'd challenge myself to answer that question that everyone sort of always asks me, is, is there a formula to winning? And I've been very lucky down the years that I've had a, a really strong track record of success in the Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition. And I know, you know, it's obviously the most prestigious, largest wildlife photography competition in the world. And it's one that people, you know, can shoot for whole careers, hoping to get one picture finally in there. And certainly I saw myself in that position in the past and still can't believe the amount of success I've had in the competition. Um, this is actually my... My um, the, my fourth winner in the last five years, which you know, I'm really proud of, and um, I think I've had um, sort of many more in, over the last twenty years. I think it's it's nine categories I've been awarded in over the last twenty years, and I've now and I think this will be the fifteenth book of winners that you'll see one of my pictures in. So I mean, it's only for me. I, I still can't find find it hard to believe. Um, just because, you know, I spent many, many years before that dreaming would I ever get even one picture in the contest eventually. So it's great to have that track record. But I also think that a lot of the photographers who've had a great deal of success, you know, sort of keep their cards pretty close to their chest. So I thought I'd challenge myself to answer that question. Is there a, a formula to that success? And I think the answer to that is 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 no, but also yes. And I, I phrase it like that and I'll come back to that in a minute. I wanted to start, though, by talking a little bit about my winning picture this year, which is, is quite a different type of, of underwater photo to be awarded. I don't think it's a type of picture that many underwater photos photographers would have shot. And I think that's part of the reason for success. But I'll just tell you a little bit about the, the image first. It's a photograph that I took while diving in the Lembe Strait. Um, and it was taken, shot with a Nikon D850 camera in a Subal housing with retro pro, pro strobes, shot with a 105 millimeter lens, um, and you can see me diving in Lembe with that setup here. Um, the photo, though, I think is quite an unusual choice of subject matter and composition, and I think that's one of the reasons for its success. Um, the the choice of subject matter, that of of, of ghost gobies, um, on on a sea fan, isn't isn't necessarily something that is particularly rarely photographed. But I think particularly the composition and the choices I made photographically about it are quite interesting. And I think that's worth a, a quick examination before I, I go on to that sort of wider question of, of, of if, is there a formula. Um, ghost gobies for me are, are a great macro subject. They're common, reasonably so, on coral reefs. And um, I always like to, to take pictures of them, featuring them and also their backgrounds, particularly if there's the ability to create some graphic strength in the composition due to the symmetry or repeating patterns of the sort of invertebrate life that they live on. And the great thing is you can find them living or perched on all sorts of subject matter from sponges to corals. In this case, you know, hard and soft corals, um, sea pens, um, and you know sea fans and in this case yeah, I think this is a starfish or a, um, no it's probably an, a holothurian um a um, um what are they called holothurians in real real world sea cucumber um, i think this is actually on a starfish but anyway um and there are subjects that i still really enjoy photographing to this day this is a photo i took this summer in the red sea of a of a, of a, of a little goby on on a soft coral with all the spicule texture coming through in the background I think what, though, um, attracts me to these subjects is that ability to work that symmetry into the into the background of my shots and create what I feel are, are powerful underwater images um, as a result of having that symmetry. You can sometimes get some interesting behaviours with them. This is a pair of little gobies um, ma um, laying eggs, uh, mating on a sponge. Um, and this is a photo of a pair um, spawning and guarding their eggs on a coral. Um, but most of the time, I think the thing that attracts me to shooting them is to shoot them within their habitat and hopefully to get that graphic strength from their habitat. But typically, I tend to go for quite simple compositions. And I think what interested me on this particular trip in Lembe was to try and take 
bigger pictures of them to really challenge myself to shoot them small in the frame and to make the rest of the frame visually appealing and this is one of the shots that i was trying to do it with um but but as you, uh, but i think what I, what i the reason i chose to enter the shot that ultimately was awarded was the fact that i felt it was a a more complex scene and um there was a photo that i think was the overall winner of the wildlife photographer of the year by nick nichols um probably five ten years ago now um maybe, maybe it won the 50th one actually um so yeah nearly 10 years ago um and it was called the the last great african photo or something like that and it was a, a whole pride of lions sitting i think it was shot in the serengeti sitting you know in a, in a broad landscape and i think that was part of the motivation behind this picture not that it's in any way similar but it was i think it was that realization of not just taking the most obvious route um the other behavior i just wanted to mention as well you can catch with these guys quite a lot is they do seem to often feed cannibalistically i don't know whether this is they're actually feeding or this is just sort of to remove competition but it's quite common that you see um gobies that live on on on, on different corals and things um feeding or with other gobies they've either killed or they're trying to eat in their mouths and i've seen this lots of times and i i don't really know whether it's simply about getting rid of competitors or whether it's actually feeding on the smaller ones that arrive um but yeah they're they're you know maybe small they may be cute but they don't necessarily live the cutest of lives anyway back to my picture and i, I was saying that i the reason that i liked this picture was that it was a slightly bigger scene and I was selling a slightly more complex story um, with it. And I feel that's why I wanted to enter it. Um, and I think that's probably partly why it's had that success. It also just, you know, bends the rules a little bit in terms of technique. But it's certainly not a picture that's about some crazy technique or super rare subject matter. It's, it's very much about that finished result. Um, so the first shot I took when I, when I found this subject, the first decent shot I took, um was um this particular image here which is just of one of the little um ghost gobies on the the sea fan and you know the sea fan had a lovely orange color lovely white pole it's very nice to to shoot and i, I took this image here with a, a sort of it's, it's a sort of still quite a wide shot i could have got you know obviously i could have easily filled the frame with one of these tiny gobies but this slightly wider shot i think works very nicely um and, and this is a perfectly fine composition but I felt there was more in this subject matter. And I think it's this decision making process that I think becomes a little bit more interesting in that I chose to shoot a wider scene from this, which is actually quite a wide scene for a macro shot because I wanted to get a, a grander story in. I also chose to slow my shutter speed down to an eighth of a second to allow the blue light, the blue underwater light to come through and backlight the polyps um, and went from this shot to this shot. Now this shot isn't it is the the frame that I entered in the wildlife photographer but I, this is the shot that of it that it's it's been on my website and it's probably been published a few times already um out there but when I chose to enter the wildlife photographer I always go back to my original raw files and and reprocess the pictures I want to enter and that's really mainly just to make sure that they 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 um comply to the rules because sometimes you know as an underwater photographer you might clean up some backscatter or something and forget that you've done it um and that would obviously be excluded in a contest like the wildlife photographer for for manipulation um so i always go back to the original raw files and reprocess them and when i chose to i chose to crop this picture differently from the version of it on my my website and the reason I chose to crop it is in the top left hand corner of the picture, there's another goby, which I didn't see at the time of shooting. But I actually rather always liked the fact that I sort of got him by bycatch. And you can see him up there in the top right hand corner, just sticking into the picture. And um, I, I like the fact that he's he's in the frame. Um, but I thought for the contest, he would feel too much of a mistake because that's what it was. So I chose just to bring the crop down from that top left corner just to keep him out of the picture and you can see i've just cropped it just enough to get him out of the frame um in the version that i chose to submit to the to the, to the contest um i i don't know whether that would have made a difference with the judges i think probably it might have done um but this slightly very slightly tighter crop um i think just 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 removed him out of the picture and certainly then doesn't offer the chance for debate i can very much see some judges really quite liking that little fish creeping into the picture and other people feeling it's a distraction and in this case here i chose to crop it out 
Um, but in the version that I sell on, on my website and through Stock Agency, he's actually in there. I don't have any problem with him being in there at all. Um, but but Joseph and I just thought that was worth mentioning. But for me, I think it was really that visual decision to not go for such a simplistic scene, to go for this complicated or more complex composition that still, I think, visually holds together. But it's not a simple composition. It's a composition. I could have easily, you know, composed a very exact diagonal in this picture or in, you know, but I, I chose to allow the slightly more, you know, there's still lots of graphic strength in this with the orange and the blue and the white um, colours. And that the diagonal line of gobies across the picture, I think, from bottom bottom left to top right works very well. But I think allowing that more complicated scene to come through um, is, is, is really, um, has really allows this picture to work. Um, and I think that um, particularly it's that colour combination that, that, that pulls things in. So that's, I think, uh, a little bit why I wanted to choose it. The reason that I chose to, to enter this picture, um, and I think this is a big part of why I enter the wildlife photographer, is I always try to find a reason why I want that picture to win. I don't really enter pictures that I would say are out and out my absolute favourite, personal favourites. I tend to choose pictures that I think there's a reason why they could win and a reason why I would like them to win. In this case, I wanted a picture that spoke a little bit about biodiversity. Um, you know, we, two of the big um, habitats or environments on our, our planet that are at most at risk of, of, of the climate crisis are our polar regions, which tend to be characterised photographically by the big iconic species like penguins, polar bears, that sort of thing, and, and the risks and the, and the suffering that they are facing. And coral reefs, which live at the other end of the uh, uh, species, at the other end of the, um, you know, the other extreme of climate, right in the tropics. And they're, they're both these habitats are at risk of the planet, re uh, from the planet heating up. But coral reefs don't necessarily have those singular um, charismatic megafaunal species that characterise them. They're characterised much more by biodiversity and, and that's what I wanted to speak to in this picture. Um, and in fact for me, you know, it, you know, although we, we worry a lot, and rightly so, about losing polar environments, it's actually the huge biodiversity loss that the loss of coral reefs would bring is probably for me much more an even bigger environmental um, disaster waiting to happen. And that's what I wanted to speak to in this picture, was just to find an image that told that story. And one of the things I like about this Coral Connections picture is the fact it's about the gobies living on the sea fan. But actually, if you see it in the exhibition and you look closely, you can see that one of the gobies has got a parasitic copepod living on it. There are porcelain crabs, a couple of them dotted about the polyps of the, the, the sea fan. And I, I really like all that interrelationship of, of the species, all these species depending on the coral. And that was for me sort of a, a subliminal message within this, you know, hopefully beautiful and eye-catching composition. So um, I now want to sort of change tack slightly and talk about is there a formula to success? And I think there's no singular image formula, otherwise I would get 20 pictures awarded every year. Um, but I do think that there must be some sort of track record that I'm, or some sort of procedure that I'm following that's allowing me to have this strong level of, of success in contests. And I, I think I'm just going to run through a few of the points that I think are important. First of all, I think that contests have never been more important in photography. With the world so packed with photography, um, I think that the curation of the best work that contests do is is more important than ever. So I and I think particularly with major contests like the Wildlife Photographer of the Year, entering these and getting your work seen on this platform is amazing. And the the platform it gives to images is incredible. You know, this picture in this week has been in newspapers here in the UK. It's been on the TV here in the UK. It's been in media right around the world. And that's just fantastic for you as a photographer and for getting people to think about and relate to your image, but also the messages behind it. So for me, that's that's a really massive part of, of wanting to enter this competition. I think the other thing that a lot of photographers are frustrated with these days is we, we is that we don't like that social media is seen as the the output of our images, and this is very much an unsocial media friendly picture. It's it's a picture that looks pretty rubbish on the screen of a phone, but when you see it big, it really works. And I I, I rail against this dominance of social media, as you might might have noticed. I'm not the most regular Instagram poster, um, but I know a lot of photographers also are disappointed that they know that. You know your social media profile is is that is is and the the impact of your posts on social media 
are not really related particularly to the quality of the content. It's much more how much effort you put into promoting that um, and that sort of thing. And I think that one of the things that's nice about competitions, it's it's a level playing field for photography. It's not about how many followers you have. Um, and um, it's actually, um, you know, experts in the field picking your pictures. That said, I do think that, you know, judging will always be subjective. And anyone who thinks that a strong track record of success in a contest doesn't owe at least in part to luck is fooling themselves because you know the wildlife photographer gets 50,000 entries and you know the chances of you know your picture falling by the wayside you know for all sorts of reasons through the through the way is really high and I think a picture like like Coral Connections you know, is a risky picture to enter because it's a picture that could easily get knocked out in an early stage because perhaps the judges don't even spot the gobies in it. You know, they're just like, oh, yeah, it's just a picture of a coral, next picture, please. You know, so a picture like that is risky. And I think that for me, if, if there is a formula, it's about finding an image that will stand out and grab attention in those early rounds. It will catch the eye. Um, but it will also maintain that interest through the rounds because these pictures are viewed multiple times through multiple rounds of judging. And so you need to stand out in the early rounds, but you can't just rely on a, a cheap, simple trick that by the time the picture's viewed the fourth or fifth time, a visual trick, I mean, um, you know, photographic, you know, um, effect or, or, or composition. But because otherwise, by the time the picture's viewed the fourth or fifth time, when the judges are beginning to start to make important decisions, they're not bored of it. They're not like, yeah, 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 OK, we get it now, bye. You know, you need a picture that's got that staying power through the, 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 the rounds. And that is a, a challenging thing to do. I think other parts of the formula, which are pretty obvious, but they're really worth mentioning, is first of all, to read the rules, to follow the rules. And that means both ethically about how you behave with the wildlife. Um, no judge in any wildlife photography competition, um, this is true of the wildlife photographer or any others, wants to award a picture that they, they don't believe ethically has been created in the right way. Um, and certainly if something comes out after the event that your picture has bent the rules ethically, you'll be straight, you'll be excluded from the competition because the contests are very strict on that. And then the other is that you have processed the picture in an ethically responsible way in that you've followed the rules about what you are and aren't allowed to do in terms of Photoshop and, or, or, and, 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 and Lightroom. I mean, I think it's the, the word photoshopping tends to imply that Lightroom is fine and Photoshop isn't. And of course, it's um, you should just call it Adobeing or something like that these days. Um, with that in mind, it's important to follow the rules. And I think one of the things that I, I put out about this picture is I had something in the frame of this picture that I decided I didn't want. And if I cloned that out, that would be outside the rules and I would be excluded. But I am allowed in this competition to crop it out, to crop the picture slightly and remove that fish that I decided for this competition I didn't want in the frame. Um, and I think that's a, an interesting point. It's only you know, a small crop on the picture, as, as you've seen already. But I think it's important to, 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 to bear that in mind that you are allowed to process the pictures. Um, I think the other things that I would sort of mention in, in that is that um, it's also really important to understand the contest and the categories that you're choosing to enter. And I think with the Wildlife Photographer of the Year, the best thing to do is to is to particularly buy the books of the previous years and really in the run up to entering your pictures, look through those books, get your mind into that mindset. I think too many photographers enter what they feel are their favorite photos. And if there's anything, something that I follow every year is I enter predominantly pictures that I think have got a reason why they could do well. And I think with those pictures, I think you stand a much better chance of success. But I would just finish by saying, if I knew it all, I would win all the prizes every year. And of course I don't. So um, I think that, you know, it's just a little bit of advice that hopefully gets you on a good track. Um, the one part I, I, you know, I haven't spoken about why I love this competition in particular is that when you do win, it is one of the most special experiences that you can have in your life. And I'm not going to expand too much on that because I think it would, it would, you know, if you are lucky enough to, to win this year or a future year for the first time, that whole experience, you know, it's, it's like that, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's the fairy tale ball um, experience that it's just such a special event. And if you speak too much about it beforehand, you can kind of ruin that surprise for people. So um, best of luck if you do enter in the future. I hope I'm there to celebrate with you. But I always celebrate my success in the wildlife photographer as if it will be the last. Because the moment you think about the quality of the photographers who are entering, and it really is all the very best people, 
and a ton of amazingly talented people you've never heard of entering every year all entering their very best work you know just to place is is just mind-blowing and i think you know very humbling if you ever saw a fraction of what was entered you'd realize how you know how lucky you've been to to get through the rounds but i think if you do follow those rules of finding images that are unique to you um, don't try to copy what other people are doing. Don't try and copy what people have done in the past. Avoid entering what your favourites are and enter pictures that you think can do well. Um, enter pictures that have initial impact but also have a staying power. I think you do give yourself a good chance of doing well. And if they speak to important issues that judges can feel in the, in the judging room, I think you also have a, a better chance of success. So hopefully that helps you for future ones. This, what supposedly short video has ended up really long. So I'll check out for now um, and hope to be back on here again soon. Bye.